Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how to append an SQLite database. So if you watched my previous video on SQLite, I just showed you how to create a database. But here I'll show you how to actually append rows or add rows to the existing database. So in this example, I'm just going to be storing in some stock data, which includes the open, high, low, close, volume, and the ticker name. And I will be getting the data from Yahoo Finance. So I'm just gonna store two tickers, Apple and Google. So if I run that line, if I save it as a list, I will go ahead and format today's date so that I can use that as a string to store my database. So here I created a function to get the data from Yahoo Finance using get symbols. I will then use adjust open high low close to get the adjusted values for each stock that I pass in. And then I will go ahead and use L apply, pass in all the tickers to the function we just created. And if we get any errors retrieving data, this will just prevent it from breaking. So I'll go ahead and run this function and then I'll run this block. The following line just excludes any items in my list that returned null and it will keep any complete cases. So I'll go ahead and run that. So for this block, I'm passing each item in the list and I'm gonna return it as a data frame. So I'll go ahead and run that block. I will then use our bind list to row bind all the stocks together. I'll return it as a data frame. I'm going to round all the values to two decimal places. I will then delete everything from my global environment except for all day today. And we also need our function called get correct open high low close. So go ahead and run that. So if we take a look at all, so when creating databases in SQLite, it won't actually save dates in this format, it'll save them as an integer. So I need to classify the types for each column. So if we go back to our script, I have the types listed here and notice that the date I'll save as an integer. So I'll go ahead and run that. So I'll go ahead and establish a connection with SQLite. I'll pass in my connection to write the table and the name of the database is called get symbols. So if we run that, it shouldn't take too long because it's only two symbols. If you want to read your entire database back in, this would be the line to do that. I don't recommend you doing so if you have a lot of symbols in there, but since I only have two, I'll go ahead and run it. If we take a look at temp, so everything looks correct except for the date, but I'll show you guys how to fix that later down the code. I also want to compare the number of entries. So in my database, I have 5610. And when comparing that to the actual data, it is also 5610. So everything got copied correctly. I'll remove everything from my global environments except for these entries. Go ahead and pass in my function as well. I will then create an index for each ticker I have in my database. This will help retrieve the data much faster. Otherwise, when you make a request for a ticker, it'll actually go line by line and retrieve each instance that matches that ticker name. So I'll go ahead and run these lines. I'm going to go ahead and delete this line. We don't actually need it. All right, so now that we created our database and I want to add more rows into it, in this instance, I'll just put in another two tickers. So I'll go ahead and call Tesla and Airbnb. I will then pass in each ticker to our function and retrieve the data. Again, just retrieving complete cases. I will then convert each item in my list as a data frame. And then I'm going to R bind list to put everything together and then return it as a data frame and then round everything to two decimal places. I will then assign the types for each column. I will then establish a connection with my database. So this will be the statement to insert new rows into our database. So I'm inserting into get symbols by passing in all the column values found in all. So I'll go ahead and send that query. All right, so if we take a look at the console, we see that we changed 2,734 rows. And if we take a look at our data frame, we see that we have the same number of rows. All right, so now to call everything back in, I'm gonna run this statement. So if we take a look at temp, we have essentially increased the number of rows in our database, which we will find our original two tickers and also the tickers that we just added data for. So everything looks correct except for the date. Now to fix the date, you will need to run the following line to convert it back as the proper date. So if we run that line, we go back to temp. And now we see that the date is actually in the correct format. All right, guys, this concludes the video. I hope this video was informative. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.